Hello fellow EDH players, I want to welcome you to the Uncommon Commander, a channel dedicated to building fun deck techs and getting better and better each episode. Today's deck tech is inspired by the idea of time travel, and by punk rock, a genre of music that must know a good necromancer, because even though it's been declared dead, it keeps on rocking. This deck is going to punch your opponents so hard their grandmas will feel it. So lean forward in your chair, ball up your fist, and get ready to rock! Because today's commander is Obeka, Brute Chronologist. This time-traveling punk rock ogre wizard has a casting cost of 1 and Grixis, a 3-4 body, and an activated tap ability that says the player whose turn it is may end the turn. The obvious way to go is to cast things like Leveler, or to steal our opponent's things with cards like Active Treason. I'll admit, those are fun directions to go in, but we're punk rockers, man. We're not going to do things the way society wants us to do them. Punk bands often care about politics, and I considered going political with this deck, but I didn't like the way it turned out. It included things like Desolation, which is easy for my opponents to get rid of, either with enchantment removal, or by everyone attacking me relentlessly until I'm dead. So instead, we're going to be non-conformists by copying exactly what our friends are doing. What I'm trying to say is that today's deck tech is going to let you copy your opponent's creatures and your own creatures and create tons of chump tokens on top of it. Obeka is a time mage, so we're going to reach into the past by targeting the creatures our opponents have cast and then beat them up with copies of their own stuff. Obeka is the life of the party, so we need to get her out at breakneck speed, and we've got a bunch of ramp spells to help with that. First up are the Mana Rocks, of which there are eight. The only ones that give colorless mana are Soul Ring and Prismatic Lens, though Prismatic Lens does have a second ability that also lets us mana fix. We then have Demir Signet, Izzet Signet, and Rakdo Signet to get our commander's colors. And we have Arcane Signet, Chromatic Lantern, and Skyclave Relic to get any color we want. For non-rock ramp, we have five cards. In order to find lands, we have Expedition Map, Wayfarer's Bobble, Burnished Heart, and Solemn Simulacrum. Wayfarer's Bobble is actually the best of the bunch because its flavor text is, It's the forest beyond the horizon, the mountain waiting to be climbed, the new land across the endless sea. There's a height beyond skyscrapers, there's a distance beyond the freeway. More than pictures in a magazine, more than tragedy in a rock and roll song. It's more than the actions you know are safe to make. It's more than money could ever buy. No, oh, wait, sorry, I got sucked into an Against Me song for a second. Now where was I? Ah yes, we also have Hole Breacher, a real jerk of a card which isn't a mana rock or land ramp, but is instead a treasure token generator. As a replacement effect, if an opponent would draw a card except for the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, you instead create a treasure token. Man, the sea is a harsh mistress, but not as harsh as Hole Breacher. Listed here are our 7 card draw spells. We do have a couple more in the deck, but their card draw is more incidental and they fit better into other categories, so you'll see those in a bit. For now, you'll notice that we have lots of effects that try to get cards into graveyards, both ours and our opponents. First up are the wheels, Magus of the Wheel and Windfall. Requiring a bit less setup are Ideas Unbound, Fact or Fiction, and Siphon Mind. Notion Thief requires someone else to try drawing cards and then replaces that draw with the draw for you instead. And finally, Psychic Vortex is a card we're definitely going to need Obeka on the field in order to use, but as long as she's available, we'll draw tons of cards from this puppy. One way that we can really abuse Avekka's turn-ending ability is by getting tons of cheap tokens on the board that would normally go away at the beginning of the next end step, but won't as long as we respond to their triggers with Avekka. With Obeka, Firecat Blitz is now just a slightly worse version of Secure the Waste, but can be flashed back. What it doesn't say on the card is that those tokens aren't red cats, they're red elemental cats. Speaking of elementals, Tillanali's Summoner, Elemental Mastery, and Chandra Flamecaller We'll all create elementals for you that Obeka can help stick around, and on top of that, Chandra acts as an additional wheel spell for us. Stone Idol Trap costs 6 mana, and creates a 6 power and 12 toughness construct artifact creature token with trample, but it can cost as little as 1 red mana. Now, when you hear a song you enjoy, it's always nice to have an encore. These next spells are going to create token copies of non-token creatures, letting you pick and choose from the best options on the board. First up are Twin Flame and Flame Shadow Conjuring, a couple of spells that only let us copy our own things, but they do that really well. Then we have two cards that let us target only things an opponent controls, Echo Chamber and Hate Mirage. Hate Mirage in particular is fun if you get to target a couple of Eldrazi Titans with it. Four mana for 20 power? <laughs> Don't mind if I do. 
We also have some cards that can give us tokens of either our own stuff or an opponent's, like Heat Shimmer, Fellhide Spirit Binder, and Nemesis Trap. The trap is extra good when Avacyn Angel of Hope is attacking you. I'm sure my friend that plays Avacyn as his commander will totally love this card. And speaking of encores, we still have one other way to create tokens. We can use our graveyard and our opponent's graveyards to get those creatures. Demir Doppelganger and Puppeteer Click don't give us tokens, but they can give us the creature we want outright or create a clone of it that we can copy then with some token spell. Felden of the Third Path gives us the ability to create token copies of creatures in our graveyard, and the Scarab God allows us to create token copies of creatures in our opponent's graveyards, except that they're also 4-4 four, four black zombies. The Scarab God and Demir Doppelganger also double his graveyard hate, so that's nice. And a final way to get a bunch of tokens with this deck is through the use of some cards with the Myriad ability. These cards are Banshee of the Dread Choir, Broodbirth Viper, and War Chief Giant. When the exile trigger for the tokens goes on the stack at the end of combat, then end your turn with Obeka, and you get to keep the tokens. Well, until somebody removes them. A special note with these cards, though. Be careful not to cast something with a beginning of the next end step trigger on the same turn that you decide to keep these myriad tokens. The next end step will end up being your opponent's end step, and you won't have Obeka available to negate that trigger. You're a pretty smart person, so you've probably figured out that Obeka is the star of this show, and without her, we're pretty SOL. Because of this, we've got a package of cards that can protect her or give her haste so that we can use her immediately. In the protection vein, we have Counter Spell and Wizard's Retort to stop any spells that are trying to remove Obeka from resolving. In the haste vein, we have Crashing Drawbridge. Finally, a couple of cards that give both protection and haste are Lightning Greaves and Swift Foot Boots. It is possible that Obeka gets removed in spite of all this protection, so we've got a few redundancies with Sundial of the Infinite, Glorious End, and Discontinuity. Our removal is also largely good only if Obeka is on the field. Especially reliant on her are cards like Voyager Staff, Voidwalk, and Psychic Theft, which can actually be a straight-up theft card as well, and Identity Thief. Our removal that isn't so dependent on Obeka is Feed the Swarm, Croesus's Charm, Demon's Disciple, and Plague Crafter. Our board wipes are Massacre Girl, Life's Finale, and Decree of Pain. Finally, our land base contains very few colorless utility lands and instead leans toward getting all of the colors that we can, since we may end up having tokens with abilities outside of our commander identity. Our utility lands are Gyre Reach Sanitarium, Mystic Sanctuary, Mystifying Maze, Thespian Stage, which is only colorless in the short term, and Throne of McKindy, which again is only colorless some of the time. Our color-fixing lands are Command Tower, Crumbling Necropolis, Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, Myriad Landscape, and Exotic Orchard. Finally, our basic lands are 9 islands, 9 mountains, and 7 swamps. The sounds of punk rock have receded, and I hear the rolling thunder of metal on the horizon. That can only mean one thing. We've made it through 95 cards of the deck and are down to the final five cards, presented in a segment that I have unoriginally named The Final Countdown! These next five cards are sure to rock your playgroup as you add these spells to the Magic Mosh. Take or make copies of their creatures and make them punch your opponents into next week. At number five is a card that understands the sad, sad truth about creatures in MTG, they're gonna die, and that card is Mimic Vat. It lets us copy our own creatures, or those of other players, and can be really fun when you get something that costs 8 mana imprinted to it. Cheating an 8 mana creature out every turn and then keeping it because of Obeka is just so very, very rude. At number 4, we have a card that looks just like a normal wheel creature, at first glance. Chase's Archivist is way better than the other wheel creatures though. You see, the Archivist doesn't sacrifice itself. Creating token copies of this thing can wheel through a library in no time at all, and that means tons of targets for the Scarab God. What's better than destroying your opponent's board when they're about to overwhelm you with creatures on their next combat phase? Stealing those creatures and using them in your combat phase, of course. At number 3, Mob Rule has our back. It's not quite as powerful as Insurrection, but it's way easier to cast, and the downside is negligible thanks to its flexibility. I've lost games to this card, but now I'm going to win because of it. The best versions of our token creating cards are the ones that can do it every turn. 
That's where our number 2 card, Blade of Selves, comes in. The blade is at its most powerful when combined with Obeka's ability to exile the exile triggers for the tokens that it creates. It's especially potent if you attach the Blade of Selves to a creature that already has Myriad, though. Do I want 6 fresh copies of War Chief Giant this turn, and then 24 fresh copies the next turn? Yes, please. Well, we're finally down to number 1, and it needs to be better than Blade of Selves? Well, I'm not sure that this is actually better, but it certainly is interesting. Hellkite Courser takes this spot, thanks in large part to Blade of Selves. You see, a really fun thing to do with Hellkite Courser is to attach Blade of Selves to it, or maybe imprint it on Mimic Vat when it dies. Obeka is then hasted and free to cast every turn until someone finally removes the offending artifact. Go ahead, waste your creature removal on Obeka, you fools. Punk's not dead, and neither is Obeka. Now then, if you enjoyed today's video, and I really hope you did, please remember to beat that like button and subscribe so you don't miss our future content. Also, please leave a comment letting me know what cards you would put into Obeka instead. And if you want to see a particular deck tech in the future, let me know and I'd be happy to give it a try. And now, I'm going to go try and beat some sense into society, so I'll see you later, you handsome bastards. Thank <music> you.